So these are the important numbers going into uh, at least for the next couple of days. The Qs need to reclaim 286 on the close. If they, if they reclaim 286 on the close. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. I usually don't record uh, a video on Thursday nights. It's kind of my day of decompression, kind of resetting my brain from like speaking for the whole week and trading and all that good stuff and recording the video and doing charts and this, that, the other thing. Now, usually my brain is fried, but since I didn't do a video on Tuesday, um, you know, figured to share some thoughts today. And there's a reason why I'm usually brain dead uh, going into Thursday, you know, middle of Thursday, going into Friday session. And today, you know, didn't make it any better. So let's talk about it, right? Uh, as always, guys, again, uh, I really, really appreciate uh, everybody's uh, support. Uh, continue to like, and if you haven't so, uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. I think we, we try to provide a lot of great unbiased uh, value on a night-to-night -night basis and obviously on the weekend. So let's talk about the tape. So I thought I made, if you watched last night's video, I, I, I thought I made a pretty uh, compelling case of the similarities between a four-day run-up, you know, four-day run-up after the 50-day moving average was reclaimed uh, this time around compared to what we saw uh, going back to uh, July the 18th. Same thing. You had a four-day run-up. Uh, they came in, right? Needed a little rest. The five-day got confirmed and they went lower. And, you know, yesterday we talked about the same thing. The market uh, got a little gassed out, a little tired, needed to reset, tested the five-day moving average. And the whole plan today was... Uh, if we can confirm the five-day moving average, which we talked about last night in the video, I thought we had a shot to go lower. Um, and that was good, right? It looked great on paper, looked phenomenal on paper. But this is one of those scenarios um, that being right, and we always talk about how it's ridiculous to uh, to be in this business to try to be right. It's, it's important to be tactical. It's important to be, uh, to be mindful of what's going on and take advantage of uh, the scenarios in front of you. And unfortunately, this was one of those days that, yeah, I was right and I had nothing to show for it. Uh, very, very uh, frustrating day. And let me explain. So this is last night's, um, this is last night's, um, you know, initial pivot watch, right? You can see, uh, and again, these were my notes and obviously we go through everything at Morning Strategy, but these were my notes, right? Um, I'm not short bias. It's just the game plan going into today from last night. It's just a continuation of the rest. The market needs a rest. Uh, absolutely phenomenal move. We're just looking, we're just, again, like I said last night video, we're just trying to capture that day two, right? That day two uh, move to the downside. So these, you know, these were the pivots last night. Uh, Meta, Tesla, Netflix, AMD, Amazon, the Qs, the Spies, Tulo, which uh, Tulo, I, I, I wasn't even watching today, but uh, you know, it's everything else. So when we came in this morning, you know, when we came in this morning, everything just got absolutely destroyed absolutely destroyed pre-market um everything that i wanted to do was ridiculous low, lower uh, meta last night the pivot that i wanted to trade was off that 1266 uh, meta opened up um, opened in the 109s uh tesla uh that i really wanted uh you know through yesterday's lows you know opened at 83 we'll get to tesla in a second it just kind of stood there the whole day 83 82 83 82 Nothing, nothing would break. It broke towards the afternoon which when I already logged off. Netflix, I loved, loved, loved this pivot at uh, 302. It was 293 pre-market, right? Just everything got destroyed. AMD was $2 lower. Uh, Amazon, you know, Amazon went down like 50 cents, nothing. But here is the major, major two drivers. And this is where we lost literally all the value uh, of the day, okay? Q's, I loved 284.60. They opened at 281. Why was 281 significant? Because 281 was the measured potential, right? Measured potential where I thought this whole day would end or at least move uh, into the goal line. And, you know, once you see everything gap down, I, literally 99% of uh, our whole watch list gap down at pre-market into measured potential, the value was gone. The absolute value was gone. Um, you know, it, it, look, 
losing money is part of the business. Making money is part of the business. But the one thing we don't have control over is overnight pre-market after hours action, overnight futures, pre-market futures. And unfortunately, today was one of those days that completely everything that we wanted to do was done, literally done before the market was open. And then we knew the fact that we knew that the queues stopped right at uh, stopped right at this 200 day uh, EMA. It was very, very important. Uh, excuse me, 50 day EMA. It was very, very important to kind of understand, well, what's about to happen next, right? How can you possibly go short uh, knowing that we just opened at the 200 day, 250 day moving average, uh, not to estimate that I'm still looking for, but the EMA. So it made it a very, very, just very, just torturous day. I just literally sat there the whole day. There was no value. Um, and I, you know, I was very, I don't want to use the word I'm frustrated. Okay. I, I was more disappointed that I knew we had a two day window of downside action. We might actually get a third one tomorrow. We'll see. Um, but I knew we had at least a two day window of, um, downward market action just because we needed a rest. And obviously this, you know, what's happening t in the last couple of days is kind of mirroring what happened in July. So yesterday we caught the value. The problem that today we didn't. So I basically just sat there the whole day, just watching stocks bouncing off their pre-market levels and just grinding, right? There wasn't any value. There wasn't any channels to take advantage. There was a lot of grinding back. Uh, and then at some point towards the afternoon, around 2.30, 2.45, they just pulled everything, right? Pulled everything again. But when you look at the final tallies, I mean, nothing... You know, nothing really got accomplished today by the bears. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it's like one of those scenarios. You know, the tree fell in the forest, but nobody was around uh, to see it fall. Did it make a sound? And the whole point was we couldn't take advantage of the second day of downward action because it all happened uh, pre-market. And if you look at the scoreboard, right, you know, nothing. You know, Dow was down seven points. Uh, the s p 500 was down 12. The nasdaq was down nothing 38 points so the bull thesis is still there in a perfect world right and we said about it and we kind of started last night's video with the same kind of scenario and i said well in the perfect world we'd get a little bit of a move up in the morning right get stuff to turn around take out today's channels and move down to this 281 level well again that didn't happen uh so now the next perfect world would be this right if we can somehow get one more day, okay, obviously the big channel here, uh, if the bulls want to start going higher, and ultimately, again, this was just kind of a pregnant pause, at least in my opinion, for at least the next couple of days. And if we can start reclaiming back the five day moving average, we're going to start to resume. So these are the important numbers going into uh, at least for the next couple of days. The Qs need to reclaim 286 on the close. If they, if they reclaim 286 on the close, they're going to reclaim the five day moving average. The same way we lost the five day moving average today, right? When it went lower, that's kind of what we talked about in last night's video. So for the bulls to regain kind of compliance, right? Uh, and start moving back higher, the Qs are going to need to reclaim this 286 level, right? That's the move higher. If there is going to be one more day of selling, we have to start losing this 280s level. You see this whole 280s level? And if we start losing this 280s level, this is the area that we want to go long, right? It's the 50-day SMA. The 50-day EMA was cool. It bounced off of it right at the pre-market lows. But what we need to do is we would love to get at least, if we can get one more day of losing the 280, getting down to this two, two, you know, 278, 277, 278 level, I do believe this is where the bulls need to make a stand. And if they do make a stand and we do bounce, I believe it will be a carbon copy of exactly what happened here, right? We held the 50 day and the next thing we know, da, 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 we started rallying. So tomorrow uh, is gonna be a very important uh, session. The only problem is we, we're not quite at the top of the range here. We're not quite at the bottom of the range here. We're a little bit closer to the top than we are to the bottom. So for going into tomorrow's session, yes, the initial game plan is see if the bears can give one more, right? One more stand and take out uh, today's lows and go down to the 50-day SMA. But if not, we're definitely going to watch uh, the re possible reclaiming of the five-day moving average around this 286 level. And any close above this 286 level, uh, we'll start the cycle uh, back up. So for tomorrow's session, uh, you know, as, as, as you can imagine, yeah, there's definitely some longs. Uh, there's definitely some shorts uh, that we have to, I mean, we have to have both sides. I mean, you know, the fact that we close 
uh, kind of in the middle of the range is, is definitely not doing anybody uh, any favors. So let's talk about some names, uh, some longs, some shorts that we are watching for tomorrow, and then we will see how we are uh, set up. You know, maybe we do get a gap down and test those levels. Maybe we get a gap up and reclaim. We'll see. Okay, it's very, very uh, up in the air. So we got first solar. Uh, you know, looks great, right? First solar, we, we had a pivot on this thing a couple of days ago. Nice move. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. If this thing confirms today's channels and there's a market uh, rally tomorrow, who knows? Maybe this thing could get to the 170 level uh, by next week. Uh, ENPH uh, in the same group, right? ENPH, uh, nice, you know, nice consolidation here. You can see it stopped three times uh, at the linear regression line. If it gets above this linear regression line, uh, it can wake up. You know, that looks fine. Uh, as well. And obviously to the downside, we still have to continue to watch. Tesla continues to put in lower lows, lows, lows. They came again, they came in today for the 7580s. Uh, they held up the stock, uh, the puts, of course. Uh, they held up the stock pretty much most of the day. Um, you know, they finally, you know, sold it out you know, towards the end of the day. I, I want to watch this bottom channel here. I, I'm, I'm convinced if, if, if this thing cannot rally and starts continuing to put in lower lows, uh, if it could just take out this one last channel, I think we do see uh, the lows from last week. We'll keep an eye on this thing as well, right? Uh, NVIDIA, you know, came out with earnings last night. Uh, you can see here it gapped up and then went red and then got, went back higher and, you know, lost the range. Uh, it closed, you know, within a dollar of the lows. I want to keep an eye on this thing to the downside tomorrow. If it confirms today's channels, you know, who knows? Maybe we get a move to 52, 53. We'll see. You know, we'll see about that. Uh, Amazon, same thing, right? Amazon, same thing as well. Closed on the 10-day moving average. If there is one more pull of Amazon, I'd like to see this thing. Uh, I'd like to maybe get a short on this thing below the 10-day moving average. So we'll watch that as well. And to the upside, in case we rally as well, you know, Microsoft looks pretty good. It's got rejected two back-to-back -back days at the five-day. So you can see we're a little bit disconnected here. Uh, we have to kind of take our cues from the overnight futures uh, and see what the market uh, does uh, does next. So again, pretty frustrating day for me today, just sitting there and just watching my whole game plan uh, go up in smoke uh, in the first, basically in the first uh, 20 minutes that I logged on into the day. Very, very frustrating. But again, as we say all the time, let this be the worst thing that could happen into your life. There's, there's children born into third world countries with no running water, with disease. And we're talking about sitting one day you know, our game plan going to hell in a handbasket. Who cares? At the end of the day, who cares? We're happy, we're healthy, we're alive. Everything else is a cherry on top. So that's it, guys. Just a quick reminder, guys, for all you guys who are uh, coming or, uh, or uh, are uh, uh, anticipating coming for the Saturday's K Kenyan Salo keynote address. It's going to be very, very cool. It starts at 11 o'clock uh, Eastern time on Saturday. And anybody who is within our midst is open. Uh, it's going to be recorded and sent out uh, at some point next week, but it, it really is going to be a cool event. Hopefully tomorrow we get a nice, more seamless day than today's watching the paint dry or anything else, other uh, adjectives you want to use. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Again, let this be your worst problem in life and everything else will take care of itself. See you all tomorrow, guys.